So uh, you all use Nginx, you all like Nginx. The main thing, or a major thing people like about Nginx is just how fast it is. Nginx takes speed very seriously. But part of, when, when you're downloading a web page, uh, there's how fast the server is, but there's also, there's the content that's getting transferred. And that can be efficient or not. And right now, we deal with this with manual optimization. So if someone is making, um, if someone is like preparing images for a website, they do save for the web, Maybe you build yourself a pipeline, maybe you expect it, everyone to do this before they put the image up, but you have to have a system for it, and often it's a manual system and it's kind of a pain. Similarly, if you want, um, if you want good caching support, you put something out there, you say, okay, you can cache this for a year, it'll stick around in the browser, but then if you want to make any updates, uh, you need to change the URL, which, again, it's a pain. Like, you have something out there, you say this is main v1, and then you have to say, okay, I just updated this. Um, you have to keep things in sync across, uh, across lots of files. Um, if it's referenced in multiple places, you need some system for the, to do this. If you try and do it by hand, it's easy to screw it up. You won't necessarily notice if you screwed it up because it's not in your cache and it's in someone else's cache. Lots of things to think about, lots of ways to get it wrong. Uh, similarly, you need, you, it's, it's good to minimize your JavaScript your JavaScript, your CSS, so that's fewer bytes in transfer, your page will load faster. And, and right now, if you want to do this, you would, you would either do this as part of your deployment system, or maybe you do it when you check in your code, it gun, runs at the same side. There are various ways, but again, it's, it's a pain. There's an inlining, it's everything, it's a mess. It's writing, da. Okay, so Nginx page speed is um, the Nginx version of page speed, which is also for Apache. Um, and what it does is, all of these things I just said, it'll do for you. So uh, you, can, you can use it uh, to automate them. You can use it um, either as, I don't know what I'm doing. I have this black box. It will optimize things for me. Just, just fix these things. Or you can use it as a tool where like, you're currently doing things by hand. You make it do exactly what you want. And it's, it's good for either of these uses. Um, but the other cool thing is that once you're automating it, um, it's really cool for A-B testing. Because before, if I was going to figure out, like, okay, what are the, so some optimizations are totally, like, there's no reason not to do them. Like, you might as well minify your JavaScript. It's free. Uh, you, you should turn on gzip for clients that support it. It's free. But for other things like inlining small images, it's unclear whether it's going to help. Like, it helps in some circumstances. It, helps, it hurts in others. There are different thresholds. It's, it's, there's, there's stuff to tune there. And if you're just doing it, if you're, if you're, if you're say, if you have to do it by hand, it's, it's very hard to figure out what your site needs. Um, so once you have an automated system doing it for you, uh, you can, it's much easier to run experiments. You can run an experiment on versus off. You can run an experiment with a different threshold. And uh, PageSpeed supports this. Um, this was something I added and I really like. So, one, so another thing you can do when you're running dynamically is there's some optimizations that are just very hard to do statically. So, like, uh, again, minifying JavaScript is an example here. Very easy to do statically. When, you, when you're looking at the JavaScript, you can say, okay, those, those spaces, those, um, we, we can make those smaller. But there are other things that if you're looking at a page on disk, you don't, you don't really know what to do without a browser. So let's give an example. So um, if we have, let's say we have one CSS file for a whole site, and we have different, different one CSS file for the whole site, and we have, um, on different pages, we use different CSS rules. So right now, we just say, oh, well, this is, it would be too hard to include just the right CSS rules on each page. We'll just include all the CSS rules we need for the whole site. The browser will only use the ones it needs. But sort of, could we do better than this? Could we just inline a little bit of CSS on each page that is the relevant CSS? Um, and so Nginx PageSpeed has a way of doing this, which we recently added. Um, and what it does is it injects JavaScript into the page for a few of your users that then runs on the client side, figures out which selectors applied, and then beacons that back to the server, and the server can inline just the right things. So there are things like this that you can do. You don't necessarily want this. It's, it's complicated. Um, different people will have different preferences on their site. But this is the sort of thing you can do once you're running, uh, once you have a, a, a dynamic optimization system in your server. Um, and it's, it's pretty powerful. So with something like this, you can stop optimizing by hand instead of, instead of creating new tools or just uh, setting things like when you save an image in your, in your image editing program. 
you can, you can now turn on page speed. By default, it will do pretty good things. And then you can experiment, figure out what's best for your site. And then you can make adjustments. And you can make your site load much faster. So thank you. Do we do questions now or at the end? I forgot. OK. All right, yes. Uh, the optimization that Nginx page speed does uh, could sometimes break the page, you're saying? Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so our default optimizations are really very safe. They break a small number of sites. We'll do things like, in order to do long caching, we have to change the URLs. If you're doing, uh, if you expect your URL to be a specific thing and you modify it with JavaScript, we might break that. Um, long caching is pretty cool, though, so we think it's worth it. You can turn it off if it doesn't work. Um, there are other things where we have sort of advanced, complicated filters, like we have one called deferring JavaScript, which is very, very powerful. It takes all your JavaScript, it rewrites it not to execute until the page loads, and then it's progressive enhancement, it comes back in and runs the JavaScript. And this requires very detailed modification of the JavaScript environment uh, for execution. And this breaks a lot of pages, uh, something like 30%, 15%. It breaks enough that we can't just turn it on by default, but when you can turn it on and it's a good fit for your page, it can make the page load much, much faster because you're no longer dependent on the JavaScript. So it can break things. Um, if you're willing to test, you can have some pretty powerful optimizations. All right, thank you.